Miata, you don't want anyone to be talking about this stuff. You want them to talk about the 32-hour week. You want to talk about the million new houses, the cap on rents. Absolutely. Look, we are in the midst of an economic crisis. I think for huge parts of the country, they have been under incredible amounts of pressure. We have families that are struggling to feed their kids, communities that are really, really, really struggling. And actually, what we need from all of our political parties, what we need from our politicians, is an ambitious agenda about how we address this, how we address the climate emergency on the other side. So. Brexit for us is a huge frustration because it is sucking all the political bandwidth away from the big issues that in the end people care about. And can you talk about those issues on the doorstep when there is this ambiguous position on Brexit? I share the frustration absolutely. I wish that politics was about the things that it used to be about, about jobs, about austerity, about the food banks, about the disgraceful rise in the number of homeless people on the streets. And there was so much in John's speech today that I... I thought was inspirational in many ways because the British economic model is broken and it has to be fixed. But unfortunately, because we failed to stick to our guns on Brexit, I think we should have stuck to the pledge in the 2017 manifesto that we would respect the result of the referendum but leave with a deal. Uh, that would have been a bridge building position. Uh, we could you have didn't taken vote for the air deal, out of the Steve, Brexit. Twice. You didn't uh, vote for the Theresa May deal, which now looks like a soft Brexit. We, we pushed rightly Theresa May to reach out to Labour and have cross-party talks so that we could co-design uh, a Brexit deal with her. She finally did that and the result of that I think is a really good package that should be brought to Parliament and we should be able to vote on. It includes concessions on uh, customs union, on environmental and consumer standards, a bill on workers' rights. That is a deal that we should vote for and I think on that basis we can leave the EU and finally get politics back to talking about the issues we want to talk about. And in 2017 that worked because you had Conservatives very much on the austerity path. Now we've seen Boris Johnson essentially flinging money into every cause that he wants. Austerity is dead. That makes your job on the doorstep a lot harder. Well, I think the reality is we have to resolve Brexit before we go back out to the people. I also want to be talking about the huge issues that matter to my community, the massive rise in child poverty, the unemployment, the fact I've got a youth unemployment rate that is two and a half times the national average. These are the things I care about. But we cannot get onto these things until we resolve Brexit. Because an area like Has mine... Has today is, just made that harder then for I, you? I, well, I'm concerned about the... My position has always been I want to have a, a, a referendum on a final deal before we go to a general election because we're not going to get the airtime to talk about this stuff but you can't separate the two things because actually in an area like mine Brexit will increase unemployment yes specifically a no deal Brexit but even a soft Brexit any agreement is going to hit the economy of my region so Brexit really to me is all about jobs and livelihoods and child poverty There's they're a interrelated question, Mieta, which is whether the public is as radical as you believe Labour wants them to be do you think they are where Labour is well, I mean, I think the political uh, common sense is shifting. I think for a lot of people who are seeing the fact that this economy isn't working for them, the fact that we've seen growth, but actually the majority of people aren't benefiting from it, the fact that people are having to work multiple jobs just to make ends meet, I think they're fed up. I think they're frustrated. And so I think there is an appetite for change. You know, the Brexit the referendum... The appetite for change is undeniable, perhaps. Yeah. When you saw Keir Starmer's face... Uh, with the question of stripping private schools of assets or of taking assets away, he couldn't answer half of that. He looked deeply uncomfortable from Labour's front bench. Well, that, that's within the party. If you poll a lot of the ideas that were in Jeremy, uh, John McDonnell's speech today, so everything from a four-day working week through to actually employees having a greater stake in the companies in which they work stronger, worker power, actually they poll really well. They're very common sense. And they're not that radical in the grand scale of where we see a lot of social democratic countries in Europe. Like, this is just mainstream common sense economics mm. and it's an absolute travesty that that's not where our economics is so i think it's absolutely right that it's on the political agenda